So we're going to have to make sure and be mindful to make it kind of the illusion of it to look similar, even though it's going to be different. So here, like I said, even though this is at the top and this one is at the bottom of the first mark. So when we get ready to put our buttons back on, so at least the markings on the finish line is going to be right below. It's going to be similar. It's going to look similar. So, but the good part is that each one of the buttonholes that is right above the marking of the finish is positioned about the same amount. So the illusion can easily be made. But we're not going to make an extra belt loop because that's not in, that wasn't told for me to do. Um, but in some cases, if I was going to do it, I probably would have made a discussion with the, with the client to see how important that was to them. And then I would actually add another buttonhole or either to just keep it the way it is. So, because nobody's looking at both sleeves at the same time. And if they're looking at you that hard, I always tell the guests or the client, if they're looking at you that hard, then mm, either they're liking you or they're, it's something going on, okay? They don't need to be concentrating on all of that, that deep. So, and this is such a dark jacket that it really doesn't matter. And like I said, nobody's going to see it because you can barely see the buttonholes, to be honest with you. So just them losing that one buttonhole over here is not going to make that big of a difference. Because once we put the buttons on, you're not going to see it. Because once the button goes on, only half of the, uh, only half of the buttonhole shows anyway. Okay. So that's what we're going to do with that. All right. So we got that done. So now the first order of business is going to be to actually fold this up to the finish line. And since we're going to have to finish this off, what we're going to do is fold it so that the right sides are together. And I'm going to pin that because this is where we're going to stitch to create this finish is on this side. Okay, so as you see, I just flipped it up so that the right sides are together. And then we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. So where the finish is there, I'm going to fold it up together there. And I'm slightly going to bring this to the left of the raw edge. That way we get a little bit, just a little bit of an angle that it will be sewn. Because as you can see, there's a crease here. And what we want to create at the end of this, what we want to create is I'm going to fold it up as the way it will look if we're finished. What we want to create is this kind of look so that it just goes right on the inside. So when it's on, when you turn on the outside, you don't see that seam because you don't want that seam to come straight to the edge like that. It's too thick and it'll make it too obvious that you actually have a seam there. So you want that to be just slightly at an angle, okay? And you'll see what I'm talking about. So that's why... I pull the flip side just a little bit over. And what I'm going to do, since I know that my markings are here, what I'm going to do, and I can look on the inside and see it. So what I'm going to do is mark, this is my crease line where it's going to fold like the finish. I'm just going to mark it here. And then I'm going to flip it on this side. Stick a pin in here so I know where I'm going to mark. And then I'm going to mark it here. So this is where I'm actually going to stitch. And you'll see what I mean when I get ready to stitch it. And that's what's going to happen there. And then to mark this side, we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to flip it up. So the wrong side. And you always, again, we want to keep in mind when we flip it up, that this line goes into this angle. Okay. So we're going to flip it up there. And you can see your crease lines. You always want to see what your crease line is by looking at the side that starts the crease line. So again, it's going to go here. And we're just pulling this out just a little bit, as you can see. Just a little bit of a drag where it's exceeding the edge of the raw edge on that side. So we're not going to have them to meet. No, we're going to pull it over just a little bit. The flip side up is going to be pulled past the underside, basically. And I'm just going to pin there. And then what I'm going to do is the same thing that I did on this side. So this is my crease line. 
we're not going to follow that crease line. We're going to start at the crease line and then we're going to angle it to the opposite of that crease line. So it'll be like this. Okay, so the crease line is here and we're going to angle it to the opposite. And that's where we're going to stitch. Okay, and then we're going to flip this side up. This side we will, we will keep the same. So we see that that's the finish. We're going to flip it up and have the wrong sides together. And what we'll do is we'll run that one all the way up. So that one should meet and fall into the crease line. And that's what we're going to do with that. Okay, and then we're going to take it to the sewing machine. We're going to sew it. It's really quite easy once you get to do it. 